Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the 2018 reorganization meeting of the Delaware County Commissioners. If we could stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do the roll call, Mr. Henry? Here. Ms. Reagan? Present. Mr. King? Here. Mr. Brooks? Here. Open nominations for president of the Board of County Commissioners. I'll make a motion that uh, James King will be president. Second that. Any other nominations? Nominations closed. Open up nominations for vice president of the Board of Commissioners. I'll make a motion that Sherry Riggins, vice president of the Commissioners. Any other nominations? Nominations closed. Congratulations, Mr. King. Thank you. Ms. Riggins. <laughs> Let's do a roll call vote. Mr. Henry? Yes. Ms. Reagan? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Thank you, Steve. Next up, we have appointments that we need to take care of. Uh, you have a list of 2018 annual appointments. These are positions that are appointed annually such as the emergency management director, medical service director, county attorney, all those different appointments that are an annual appointment. <clears throat> uh, and we provide a list. I provide a list to you. Uh, I think that, I don't think that there are any changes other than the county redevelopment commission. Everything else is gonna remain the same. So you can adopt this list in total and Denise will just add that list to the minutes. Mm -hmm. And I have extra copies if somebody wants them. So move. Second. I have a motion of second. Steve, can you call the roll, please? Ms. Reagan. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Congratulations out there. We'll have uh, letters for you to sign for the appointments for all those as well. Thank you, John. <clears throat> Excuse me. The next list are appointments. These are offices that have a set term, either a three or four year term. Uh, for those that expired in 12-31-2017, uh, uh, Ms. Honeycutt and I worked on this list all last week to try and get as many as uh, we could and figured out who they were. So, and I really appreciate Jenny's help on all that, gathering up the information. That takes a lot of time. There's a lot of appointments. So, I would suggest that you do these individually since they're, they have different terms and different expirations. Okay. Well, our first one would be the airport authority, which would be Rhonda Small. It's a four-year appointment. I get a nomination in a second. I didn't know if you wanted to do them all together. And read them all. You want to just read them all? And you can just read them all and then all right. make a motion to approve them all. And the next one would be the Board of Health, Joe Russell, and Dr. John Peterson. Uh, next would be Delaware County Planning Commission, be Teresa Hensley. Then Delaware County Board of Zoning of Appeals, Phyllis Zimmerman. Delaware County Fair Board, Jane Laster, Donna Patterson, Melanie Marshall, Park Keesling, and Lenny Bratton. And then we will have Regional Liberty, Wastewater, Steve Graves. These are the ones that we have. We've got a few. With, we'll with the exception of the Fair Board, those are all four-year terms. I'll make a motion we approve all those appointments. Second. Have a motion a second. Steve, can you call the roll please? Mr. Henry. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. There's still some vacancies, but you'll work on them. Yep. Thank you, John. Next, we have resolution 2017-044 that we have tabled. I would like to continue leaving that table at this time. I agree. So we'll move on down to approval of minutes. For December 18, 2017. So moved. Second. I have motion and second for approval of minutes. Steve, can you call the roll, please? Ms. Reagan. 
Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. <coughs> Next, we'll go to contracts and agreements. I believe we're going to wait on these. John, yes, I'd like to. The 16th. I'd request that you table those to the 16th. I was making some phone calls, and it's difficult finding people around holidays. Everybody's taken off, so. I'll make a motion to table those two. Second. Have a motion and second to table. Steve, can you call the roll? Ms. Reagan. Yes. <coughs> yes. Mr. King. Yes. Next, we'll go to resolutions for approval. Resolution number 2018-001, resolution of the Board of Commissioners of Delaware County, Indiana, authorizing the reimbursement of certain expenditures made prior to issuance of long-term financing. This is a resolution that's been prepared to um, work on the jail project, refinancing project. This is kind of the first step uh, for the refinancing to reimburse for certain expenditures. Whether you have them or not, this is always the first step for any refinancing, so, or any financing project. I'll make a motion. We adopt resolution 2017. Second. I'm sorry, it'd be 2018 I have a motion and a second. I do have a question. Um, we could go in and adjust this if it's yes, too much, not enough. Yes. Yes. Real easy. Yeah, it, it, since it's resolution, only takes one reading, and it, you can do an amendment if necessary. But this is just the first step to get the process rolling for the for the year. Thank you. Anybody else? Steve, can you call the roll? Mr. Henry. Yes. Mr. Reagan. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Next, department heads, elected officials. <coughs> If not, we'll move down and we'll take questions and comments from the public. Do we have plans? No, we don't have plans. No. Anybody from the public wish to discuss anything? About this resolution or just about yeah. it? No, about anything, sir. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to talk You have to come up to the podium. Yeah, please, get your sir. name and address. Make sure that little Not light's on. Or just name. Make sure that little blue is blue light's on. I'm Jay Williams. I'm here about the uh, tattoo and piercing ordinance that was recently passed. Um, it's pretty unfair. I just want to see about how we can go about getting a small amendment to that. Overall, it was pretty needed. It hadn't been updated since 1997, but there is a uh, stipulation in there for either tattoos or piercings that both parents will need to be present to sign for that to happen. I'm not sure anywhere else that you have to have that happen takes one parent to do anything else. I'm not sure why it was changed. I'm not sure who's protective or how it's healthier for our county. Uh, so, Jamie's here. Jamie, would you like to answer his question for us, please? Yeah, I, I feel like I've answered it a few times. But well, just make a public record of it, please. <coughs> Jamie Bain, administrator of the health department. Um, the stipulation he's addressing is indeed a signature requirement for both parents for a minor to receive a tattoo or piercing. Um, the state's rule is one signature from one parent. It goes on to state that we can enact uh, stricter rules on the local level, which is what we've done there. Um, when it comes down to it, the change is actually going to require two signatures on a piece of paper or a sig single signature stating that they have the authority to be the legal guardian. There's no additional, there's nothing additional. There's been a lot of accusations, there's been a lot of hypotheticals thrown around of uh, how are we supposed to do that. The rule doesn't specify how you are supposed to figure out who the parents are or if the single parent has sole custody. It simply states that you have to get the two signatures. But if you're legal guardian, you only have to have one signature? One signature, that's correct. Okay. So I guess, why would you not want both parents because to sign else, for that? Because nobody else has to have that anywhere. Not to play dangerous sports, not to sign for a surgery, not to sign a kid in or out of school. I mean, there's no situation that requires that outside of this. Yeah, what would happen if, just say I have a 13, 14 year old son or daughter, I have legal guardian, guardianship of the juvenile, uh, the mother doesn't, but the mother takes him 
and say you put a tattoo on them. I doesn't, as the legal guardian, I don't want them to have a tattoo. What happens then? That's a civil matter between you and your ex, not Board of Health or anything. Right, but if something like that is stipulated, then she can't take them. I would have to be there as the legal guardian. Yeah, you both have to be there. And I think that's who the rule's trying to protect. But what it's going to end up forcing is creating a health problem because people are not going to jump through these hoops. They already do it to save money at their own houses. You know, like I said, if we're trying to create a healthier environment, we should make it easy for people to get the services they want, not jump through additional hoops. Yeah. I, I, I do appreciate that. that. Yeah. Well, if, if I, I could, could I'd like I'm, to address that. Well, if I'm a legal guardian, and I have the paperwork, I can bring all that to you and say, look, I'm, I'm the legal guardian of this girl or this boy. I want them to get a tattoo. I can understand that, but I'm the only one that signs. Sure. But one parent, do they have to come in and prove anything to you that they are the legal parent? Well, they are the legal guardian? You ask, because if you ask Mr. Payne, all they need is a signature stating that they're the sole guardian and all that. But when his employee came into my studio to explain the ordinance as it was passed and like how it affected us, when he was going through it item by item, line by line, Mr. Bay says, I don't need to ask somebody for their death certificate, but I was literally told to ask for somebody's death certificate if somebody's parent was deceased. That legal custody matters aren't my business. I'm not maintaining records or things it's, like that. Yeah, and I understand that, but like from my point of view, if my wife was to take one of my children in to have them tattooed and I didn't wish that I was the legal guardian I would be upset not only at the wife but at the place that she took them to because you know they didn't check to see if she was the legal guardian well it said we do safe procedures that's what we're there for people come in they sign the paperwork they said that's what they want and that's what we do you know like I said I can't Discuss your civil matters between you and your ex or whatever. That's if you guys get upset about I want you guys to agree about it. I don't want to cause any family issues. I don't actually want anything to do with it. But I if if, if you tattoo them, you're going to be in the middle of it because if you tattooed my kid, I'd sue you. See what I'm saying? You could try. I mean, but if you come in and I just did my job, somebody signed for it. Who you really need to sue is the person, the adult that signed for it. I didn't do anything wrong. I, I just did my job. I did what was required of me by law, taking the paperwork, getting the signatures, and somebody claimed legal responsibility for that. That's what our release forms, we've been doing that for 20 years. And that's another thing, it's worked just fine for 20 years the way we've been doing it. It hasn't been changed. I mean, in 97, we require an adult to sign for it. I mean, that's never going to change. At our personal studio, we don't tattoo kids. Nobody under 18, regardless, that's how it's always been. I'm really picky about piercing kids. One of the only reasons that I do it is so they don't do it themselves or do it in a high school bathroom or something like that. But I'm the pickiest guy in town when it comes to piercing kids. I don't even pierce ears under the age of 13. Mm -hmm. As the way the ordinance sits, as long as you and your wife are there, we can tattoo your infant. That's not right. Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're leaving that us to our ethics to determine what ages. There's no lines being drawn. It's left up to us. Most of us are pretty responsible. We don't like tattooing children. We're not going to tattoo babies. I don't even pierce babies, and you can go to a pediatrician and have it done. But I personally think that a kid should choose to do it when they're old enough to make that choice for themselves. I'd like to ask Mr. Main, was there some concerns that you've had around here in the community, and that's why you felt you needed to tighten it up a little bit? Yeah, we've received a number of complaints on that. I've dealt with a number of complaints on that when I was previously in Henry County. At the time of uh, sitting down to rewrite our ordinance, we felt that that was a good addition to include. Um, you guys have heard me use examples. I'll give you one example I dealt with before. There was a, a mother who had filed a complaint in Henry County about a father who didn't have custody, who had the son like a weekend per month. Um, the accusation was that he basically wanted to be the cool dad who was going to take the kid to get his tattoo so he could be the cool kid at school. And um, you know when it when it all came out, dad was basically you know a meth cook who contributed to the child in no way, shape, or form other than getting to see him one weekend a month and then took him to get a tattoo that mom disagreed with. Um, I think the, I don't think the rule's unreasonable. I think it's, it's um, simple to comply with. Um, Mr. Williams mentioned a concern of public health. That 
that concern is going to exist no matter what ordinance is in effect, no matter what detail of an ordinance. The good news is um, we have quite a few tattoo and piercing shops in Delaware County and none of the other ones have stated that they're not going to comply. Uh, a couple of them have actually stated support and said they don't see any problem with it whatsoever. Um, so unless you have further questions, that's my case. Yeah, okay, well, that's, and are you seeing some other counties wise up for this? Other counties are moving forward with different things. Madison County actually has uh, the same requirements, but they actually require documentation, photocopies of documentation. So if there is a single parent who's the guardian, not only do they have to sign stating it like we require here, but they'd also have to provide the court paperwork. Um, Madison County also requires, um, their ordinance bans any sex offenders with any type of offense under their belt for any length of time from holding a tattoo or piercing permit. Uh, up until a couple months ago, they actually banned anybody with any felonies from holding a tattoo or piercing ordinance or tattoo or piercing permit. Uh, they rescinded that aspect of their ordinance, but everything else has stayed in effect. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Williams, how many other tattoo shops do we have around town? You have an association that you get together and talk about? Nah, there's roughly seven to ten of us at any given time. And again, what Mr. Bain was talking about are civil matters. You know, we, a kid and, and our parents fighting with one another. I mean, we can't police that. You know, we can't make decisions for parents. I said I wanted to agree, but I can't get into their home lives and make sure that they agree. I didn't see in that situation where the child's health was being put at risk by getting that tattoo. Now, maybe like I said. Parents are upset, feelings got hurt. <coughs> no one was unsafe, other than maybe the meth cook taking care of a kid one day a month or whatever. You know, but again, that's not that's not our concerns. You know, like I said, we want to provide safe procedures for people and be able to get them in the door and out without any hoops to jump through. Otherwise, they're either going to go to another county where it's not quite as bad, or they're going to lie on the paperwork, or they're just going to do it themselves. I agree with our ordinance. I'd like to stay with it myself. I agree. I, I would too. Thank you for your comments, okay. though. Thanks, Jamie, for your research. Hey, can I comment on that? Sure. Right. Hey, my name is Nate Harmon. I've tattooed professionally since '97. Uh, we have our shops right across the street. We have a tattoo only shop. We don't pierce. Jay pierces, so I, I think it affects him more because a lot of people take their dollars in. You'll see them with their nose piercings, decide whether or not they can have their belly piercings. It's going to affect him being a, 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 a working member of this county because the people aren't going to be allowed to with that. We've always taken, in any shop that I worked in before, that's another thing, when it goes to the county to county ordinance, what happened in 1997 when they legalized it, and I was tattooing before it was legal, but when it comes to legal, I'm a professional now. Straight, that's how that happened. In 96, they passed the ordinance, and in 97, it went into effect. And uh, now you got county to county. Some counties never even had an ordinance. In Indianapolis, Marion County, it's $40 for the artist, and the shop pays the license for the county. If you were a food handler in the state of Indiana, you have to get a food. Every restaurant requires a food handling license, right? And you can go from any county. I can work at any restaurant I want to. Right now, when I work in any other county, I work in Indianapolis, or if I go to work in Anderson, Anderson's like almost $500 per artist. Uh, Muncie's is $75. I don't know what Henry County charges now, or as different ordinances. I would like to do some sort of chart to see if it's the counties that have the poor income that are charged the most on the licensing fee. But basically, we have a state now that you'd have to pay per county, every single county, in order to be a tattoo artist in that county, per county's charge, instead of having one state licensing fee or one state notion. They left that open, and somebody needs to change that on the state level. So, like, if you go to other states, they'll even give you a permanent license, like a driver's license, where I can just tattoo at any, I'm licensed through the state, so I can tattoo at any shop. Now, the shop themselves have to license them shops through the county, so they haven't changed that now. So, the... The ordinance as it is now doesn't affect me, but we've always, no matter what, if a minor's come in at any shop I worked in where they did do piercings, whatever, we need a birth certificate, a picture ID, the parent's picture ID, and the last name has to match what's on the birth certificate. Now, whether or not that proves that they are the legal guardianship, what you're saying here is that their people are gonna need 
a birth certificate, the, the dad's ID, and the mom's ID, and be there during the procedure, or they can have legal guardianship, and then they don't have to be. But no one says divorce has legal guardianship like that, and that's the majority of them, you know what I mean? They're not walking around with legal guardianship papers unless they've adopted the child on some level, where they, like, you know, a, a meth instructor or a cooker or whatever, they've taken the child out of custody and gave it to somebody else, you know? And uh, so, I mean, I think the primary thing is it's going to affect a lot of people who do piercing and do it safely in this county. Now, they can go over to Anderson or Henry or some other county, but then you're basically running business out of this county. Um, and I, I understand it, like both parents being there, and I don't think you should tattoo a kid under 18 no matter what. I mean, at one time in Illinois, you weren't allowed to tattoo anybody under 21. That ran the entire tattooing industry out of Illinois for 20 years. And uh, I don't know. So I work in a different shop than Jay, but I just came up here to support it because I think, you know, it's sort of an industry I've worked in for over 20 years, college degree, and it's, you know, it's always had a slightly, like, angled look upon it, even though it's a 6,000-year-old art form. It's probably the oldest art form still practiced by mankind to this day. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, it, it maybe even that all these counties are trying to do what they need to do, but it needs to be a state thing to set in for artists individually to work because... It's not fair to me as an artist to have to pay $75 here, and if I want to work in Anderson, I have to pay four or $500. I have to have different paperwork, different paperwork for every single county. I, I can't tell you off the top of my head how many counties are in Indiana, but I shouldn't have to pay a fee over $50 for every single county. That makes it Im impossible for me to work here. I can go to another state and pay one state licensing fee, and I do that in North Carolina and Tennessee, and I can go there and work at any county I want to work at. And I, I do pretty much the same thing I do here for this county, but it, it, it creates an it creates unfa uh, unfair working grounds. Like I just look at food handlers and, th and their licensing and how they can go everywhere. But then also in these situations where they put people in that are trying to do the best, rewrite an ordinance that hasn't been rewritten since 97. But when they do it, then they start to push some people out. But I don't think anything should sway too far away from the state and what they laid down in 97. But, you know. Yeah. Tell them what you're talking about. You need to get a hold of your state legislator. Yeah, I know. And, and discuss that. I talk to people in Indianapolis, and the thing is, that when you talk to other artists and stuff, they want you to keep the state out because whatever their whatever their deal is in Marion County, forty dollars an artist. They don't want people to step in and raise it to seventy-five or four hundred fifty dollars. Right. You know, what I mean, they don't they don't want people to get involved with them that much to start taking more money for a license. Yeah. Good point. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask one more question? Yep. How do How do I go about seeing about getting a small amendment to this? I mean, is there any process for me to... Sure. The process would be, uh, since this is a Department of Health, Board of Health uh, ordinance, it has to go through the Board of Health first. They have to make a recommendation, and then recommendation comes to the commissioners. The commissioners then adopt those that recommendation in the form of an ordinance that makes it effective for the whole county. Okay, so you got to get the Board of Health to... You would go to the Board of Health, amendment. get no. them, suggest an amendment to them. Okay. Okay? All right. That's where it has Thank to start. You. Okay? Right. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? I'd entertain a motion to recess. So moved. Second. Go ahead and recess.